time to get your thinking hat on, folks, because we're going to be looking at some matrix multiplication in this lesson. If it sounds scary, that's because it is scary. We're going to be looking at a formula called M-Mult, which is matrix multiplication. And just a quick recap, we're going to look at the transpose function as well, which we may or may not have seen already and you may not or may not be familiar with. Uh, that one's very easy. So, so we'll start with transpose because that's the nice easy one. Uh, so if I have a column of data and I want to change it to a row, I can use this formula called transpose, highlight the range, hit enter, and it changes it into a column for me. I can also take columns. So if I have this data here, uh, sorry, rows, I can take a row there and transform that into a column. So it's a nice way when you're working with complex formulas, especially array formulas, and you're working with row or column vectors, but you need to flip them one way or, or the other to, to complete your calculation, then a transpose is a really handy function to, to remember. So it crops up a lot, so it's a good one to know. And you don't have to just have single rows or columns, you can work, it works equally well with ranges over multiple columns. Uh, so we can just quickly, just let me central those, we can quickly transpose all of those into two rows like that. So that is transpose, very quick run through that one. Let's move on to the scary hard matrix multiplication, the fun of the M mult function. So a matrix is a range like this. It's, it has multiple rows and multiple columns. And this example here in matri matrix one, this range has five rows of data and two columns. So it's a five by two matrix. Now matrix two over here has two rows and three columns. So this one is a two by three matrix. And if we want to do matrix multiplication, then the number of columns in matrix one of our multiplication must match the number of rows in matrix two. So I can multiply two columns here against two rows here. So let's make a note of that so I have that fresh in mind. So in standard matrix, matrix multiplication, the number of columns in matrix one must equal the number of rows for matrix two, which we've seen. And the matrix output is the size of matrix row one rows, so that's five, and the matrix two columns, which is three. So we should see a five by three matrix when we multiply this lot together. So let's see that in action. So we use the formula M mult. We give it the first uh, array matrix, rather, range, and we give it the second matrix. So I just brought the helper pane up there just to show you what's going on. So it has two arguments, the first matrix and the second matrix. And if you remember, the, the number of columns in matrix one here must equal the number of rows in this matrix two for it to work. Otherwise, it'll give you an error message. So we'll hit enter. And now we have our nice five by three matrix. So what's happening? Let's have a talk about that. So the first thing it does is it, multi it takes the row one here and multiplies it against column one. So it's that one by three and the one multiplies against the first element, the three multiplies against that second element and then they get added together. So one by one is one, three by one is three, that makes four which goes there. Next up the two by one multiplies by this first column here, so second row against the first column, so that's two times one is two, plus a one times a one, which is one, that makes three total. Then we do that one against that one, then that one against that one, you can see that one will make five, then that one against that one, and then I move on and run through all five again against the second column, and then I move through and do all five again against the third column. So, for example, this 21 in the middle here would be the middle row here, so the third row multiplied against the second column there, and it's one times one, which is a one, and a two times two, which is 20, add them together to make 21 to go in this cell here. Uh, and so that's all it is. It's, it's a bit daunting at first, but once you get the hang of matrix multiplication, it's not that tricky. So I'm gonna show you one example here about how we could create a running total for these values here, and how we can use the mmult function to do that. So obviously if we were to just to do this manually, the running total would be that. The first one would be one, and then we'd add the new value to the value above. And we'd just keep on dragging that down. But then what we'd have to do is if I added a new person in here, so Bob, and he had um, eight, then it doesn't automatically update. I have to go in and, and copy, the, copy the formula down. 
and also or even you know drag it down so it's sitting there so you could put an if statement in there but again what we'd like to do is actually just have an array formula that was our running total so that I could have one single formula here so that anytime I added more data it would just simply update that running total and just keep that going for me and we can do that nicely with a an, uh, with a, an emult function so let's go and check that out so what do we need? We need to create two matrices that we can then multiply together. And we're going to do this in stages again. And we'll just go ahead and create matrix one up here. And this is going to be a little bit uh, convoluted, but just bear with me. Just keep going through to the end and you'll see, I think, how it all comes together. So let's just start with the formula equals row B2. And we'll just go down as far as B10 to keep things simple because otherwise these formulas get very large. but when we're done, we could just simply remove that 10 so that we don't, this this range goes all the way to the bottom of our data set or, or, of our sheet. But we'll start with just B2 to B10. And let's just add an array formula by command shift enter or control shift enter on a PC. And that gives me then just simply the, the, the row number. Now let's use our friend, let's just transpose that. So we come inside the array formula there, put the transpose in. Hit enter and now suddenly that moves those all across to to um, to a single row so we've got now columns instead okay so that's part one of the formula let's leave that in place there and let's now also just keep a copy of this original uh, column vector we had what I'd like to do is just know whether this area here is whether these ones here are less than or equal to the row uh, across the top here. And we'll sort of fill this in if you like. So let me just show you that and, and then you'll see, you can see what I mean a little easier once it's actually. So first of all, I'll just put that in. Then I'll take this one here. And really all I want to do is just say, is this less than or equal to? And now you can see I'm saying, let's also just do some a quick conditional formatting. So for example, this row here, what I've said is six, take the value six and we'll test against two. Is it less than that? No. Less than or equal to three? No. Less than or equal to four? No. Less than or equal to five? No. Less than or equal to six? Well, it's equal to six, so that's true. It's obviously less than seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. So that's how I fill out each row. And that's a single formula here that's now doing that for me. So let's continue. Let's now actually multiply that by the values here because that will then turn these trues and falses into something much more useful. So what, we'll, what I'll do is rather than, we'll leave that matrix there so you can really, we can see this really in stages and we'll just make a new copy down here. We wanna make sure we don't have two. So we'll just get that set up again. So that's the same, just a copy of that. So what I'll do is I'll come inside of here. We need to put some brackets around this first. Uh, then I can multiply it by B2 to B10 and then just close that last bracket off with the, with the array there. And what it's done is it's changed all of the trues and falses into numerical values based off here. So when it tests the, when it's a false, it will just put zeros. And when it's a true, it will put the corresponding number from, from over here. So I've now got a matrix. And the one last thing I'd like to do with, with this one actually is just transpose it because I want my ones to be all down here. Uh, and the twos, threes, etc., across. So I want to just transpose this one so that it fits. It's the right format for when we're doing our matrix multiplication. So we just need an extra transpose around this one. Hit enter, and you'll see it's just flipped it around. Okay, so now I have my matrix one ready. Let me just now let's clear out this one up here. Also get rid of the, the true false conditional formatting there, and we'll move this we'll move this one just up there so that matrix one is. Up there and out the way and let's go ahead and create matrix two now and matrix two is a lot simpler thankfully so we'll just use the formula called sign and it returns a minus one if the input number is negative one if it's a positive number and zero if it's zero so let's put in b2 to b10 again and then hit the array formula and you'll see all it's done is just change all of these to ones and then zeros for those last two that were were empty so i've now got an array of ones and zeros and now we can do the M mult, the matrix multiplication. But let's first check that we have the right uh, size matrices. So if you remember, we needed 
the same number of columns in this one as rows in this one. So I have a nine by nine matrix here and I can multiply it by a nine by one. I have nine columns in this one and nine rows in this one. So yep, we're good to go with the matrix multiplication. So let's do an M, we'll do that one here and we'll do M mult and we'll do this one here multiplied by this one here and we should end up with a again a nine by one matrix from it and so what it's done is it's actually just calculated now a our running total effectively because we do we take our first row here multiply it against this one and obviously it's just one against a one and everything else is zero because these zeros the second row here we multiply against here and that gives me the three so it's a one times a one plus a two times a one and then a one, two, and a three. Add them together, gives me the six, etc. So let's just finish the whole formula off now and put it actually back up here into our running total column. So we'll just copy it. Then we'll go ahead and actually grab the, um, the two matrices we calculated rather than just reference the cells. So we'll put that one in there. Now I have to click hit enter again to make sure it's an array formula and then the second one was this sign let's copy that and let me just open this out we'll drop that into my array formula let's just get rid of that line there and we'll hit enter again and that's my running total and then the one last thing i want to do is just to to not show it if these ones are blank so that's very easy to do with a an array formula so we'll say if b2 b10 Give me this answer. That's the end of that. Otherwise, what do we want to do when it's false? We could just leave it blank. That will be one way. We can use this construction if error uh, one over zero, which gives me the error. And if it's an error, then that just puts nothing into my cell. This guarantees an error, one divided by zero. If it's an error, then just put nothing into the cell. That's the nicest construction you'll see sometimes. And there we go. It's now done the calculation and the running total now is uh, in place. As I said, let's actually just change all the tens to thousands now. So it goes right down to the bottom of the data sets. Excuse me. Uh, hit enter. And then now when I add in a new person, so let's say it was Jane, or oh, we had Jane already, let's say it was Helen and she had a value of 100 then it will add in that it's going to take a little moment to update there we go it just adds in that 133 automatically for me so that's a nice application of the m mult combined with the transpose combined with the row so i think our heads are probably hurting enough for one lesson so thanks very much for your patience and for bearing with me through that uh, i hope that was worthwhile and you learned something and thanks for watching see you next time folks